Hello my dear students, this is your Anamika ma'am. Today we shall study English Ferry. We begin chapter 2nd, The Merchant of Venice. So this story, The Merchant of Venice, is from Tales from Shakespeare, which was written by the brother and sister writing team, Charles and Mary Lamb. The Merchant of Venice was originally a play and was written between 1596 and 1598 by the famous Shakespeare, who was an English playwright. Around 200 years later, Charles and Mary Lamb decided to introduce Shakespeare's plays to children and so they wrote tales from Shakespeare. The book became popular with both the young and the old. Now, just to summarize the entire story, there are several characters here. Antonio being one of the important ones. Antonio is a very rich merchant. He's very wealthy and he takes a loan from the Jew Shylock to help his friend Bassanio who wants to marry Portia. Now Antonio can't repay the loan and without mercy Shylock demands a pound of his flesh. The heiress Portia who is now the wife of Antonio's friend dresses as a lawyer and saves Antonio. Now the story begins like this. There was a Jew named Shylock who lived at Venice. He was a usurer. What is a usurer? Usurer is a person who lends money at a very high rate of interest. So he used to lend money to Christian merchants at very high rates of interest. He was a very hard-hearted man and he was disliked by all good men, particularly Antonio. So Antonio is another main character of this story. And Antonio was also a very wealthy merchant there. Now Shylock too hated Antonio because Antonio was a very good man and he used to lend money to people when they were in trouble. And the best part about Antonio was that he would never take any interest from the money that he had lent. That is the reason everybody in Venice loved Antonio. Now as I told you that Antonio was one of the kindest man and he was loved by all but his dearest friend was Bassanio. So here Bassanio is one more character which is introduced in the story and Bassanio had nearly spent all his money by living in a very lavish manner. So whenever Bassanio wanted money, Antonio assisted him and Antonio helped him. Now one day Bassanio came to Antonio and told him that he wanted to marry a lady who he dearly loved and whose father was very wealthy. He had a large estate. But because Bassanio did not have um, enough money to furnish himself suitably, he approached Antonio so that Antonio could lend him 3,000 ducats. So ducats was the currency that time in Venice. Now that time when Bassanio wanted money, Antonio did not have that much money but he was expecting his ships to be back soon. So with that expectation, he went to Shylock and he wanted to borrow money from him. Now Antonio and Bassanio, they both went to Shylock together 
and Antonio asked Shylock to lend him the 3000 ducats and which he would repay when his ships were back. Now Shylock is shocked when he sees Antonio asking for money from him. So he even asks him, do you think I should lend you 3000 ducats? And then Antonio replied that if you don't want to lend me as a friend, lend me as your enemy. And then Shylock pretending to be kind said he would lend him the 3000 ducats and take no interest for his money. But only on the condition that if he is not able to repay his money by the certain time, he would forfeit a pound of flesh, sorry, a pound of flesh to be cut off from any part of his body that Shylock pleased. So this is a cruel condition that he puts forward so that he can take revenge from Antonio. So even though Bassanio was against this advice, Antonio signed the bond for the 3000 ducats that he wanted to take from Shylock for his best friend Bassanio. Now as I told you Bassanio wanted to marry Portia who was a rich heiress and she lived in Belmont. So now after taking the money Belmont, uh, sorry Bassanio went to Belmont with his friend Graciano. Here in Belmont, Bassanio was successful in winning the hand of Portia and he confessed to her that he did not have enough money. But Portia did not love him for his money but he loved him for his worthy qualities and she answered, Myself and what is mine is now yours. I give them with this ring. And she presented a ring to Bassanio. Bassanio was so overwhelmed, so happy that he vowed that he would never part with the ring. Now, Graciano and Nerissa. Nerissa, who was Portia's maid, they also started liking each other and wished to marry each other at the same time as Bassanio and Portia. Now their entire happiness turned to complete sorrow when they got a letter from Antonio. On reading the letter, he turned pale. He did not know what to do and that is when Bassanio told the entire story to Portia that how he had taken money from Antonio and when Antonio did not have the money, they had taken it from Shylock and he also told her about the bond of flesh that was signed and the letter read as Sweet Bassanio, my ships are all lost. My money, my bond to the Jew is forfeited. And since in paying it, it is impossible I should live. I wish to see you at my death. Upon hearing this, Portia and Bassanio, they married. Portia said that let's get married soon so that my money become yours. You can legally have the right for my money and then you can help your friend Bassanio. And here on the other hand uh, even Graciano and Nerissa got married. And just after the marriage uh, Bassanio and Graciano rushed to Venice to help their friend Bassanio. Sorry Antonio. When they reach Venice, they find his 
friend Antonio in prison. The cruel Jew refused to accept the money that Bassanio offered and a day was set to try this shocking case before the Duke of Venice. Portia, meanwhile, began to think if she could be of any help and she could save Bassanio's dear friend. Thinking of an idea to save Antonio, Portia reminded that he had a relation named Bellario who was a counsellor in law. So she asks uh, his help and Bellario uh, sent him her letters of advice on how to work on the case. Now Portia and her maid Nerissa, they get dressed as men, as lawyers and they arrive to the court in Venice and Portia presented a letter to the Duke there that he would be uh, the lawyer and he would be fighting for the case. Then began the important trial. Here Portia looked around and she knew who was the merciless Jew. She also saw Bassanio but of course Bassanio was not able to recognize her as she was dressed in a costume of a man. Now Portia started her trial and first of all she addressed herself to Shylock and very politely talked of the noble quality of mercy and anyone's heart would have melted hearing what she had to say about mercy. But Shylock was a hard-hearted man and nothing could change his mind. After hearing whatever Portia, who was dressed as a lawyer, Shylock only answered that he wanted nothing else but the flesh from Antonio's body. Then Portia asked, that was uh, was Antonio not able to return his money back but Bassanio offered the money to Jew which he again uh, did not accept. Now Shylock did not want the money and Portia gravely answered that laws once established must never be altered and Shylock was happy learning this or he was happy after hearing this. Then Portia wanted to look at the bond and when she had read it she said by this bond the Jew can lawfully claim a pound of flesh to be cut off nearest Antonio's heart. Shylock now started sharpening a long knife. He knew that the moment is about to come. Looking eagerly towards Antonio, Shylock said, Come, are you ready? After reading the bond thoroughly, Portia said, Wait a little, there is something else. This bond here gives you no drop of blood. The words expressly are a pound of flesh. So then she says or she adds that if while cutting the pound of flesh, Shylock would shed even one drop of blood, his lands and goods will by the law belong to the state of Venice. After hearing this, Shylock was now sure that he would not be able to take his revenge back because if he cuts the pound of flesh, it's not possible for the blood not to shed. 
So this wise discovery of Persia saved the life of Antonio and Graciano exclaimed, O oh, wise and upright judge. Shylock, finding himself defeated, now said that he would take the money. And Bassanio was very happy and he gave the money to him. But while he was giving it, Portia stopped him saying, By the laws of Venice, your wealth is forfeited to the state for having conspired against the life of one of its citizens and your life lies at the mercy of the duke. So by this she meant was that because he had conspired to take life of a citizen of Venice, he was not in a condition or he should not be given the money. Instead, his money was at the mercy of Duke and so was his life. And now let's see what the Duke replied. The Duke then said to Shylock that he grants his life to him but half his health would belong to Antonio and half would belong to the state. But the generous Antonio said that he would not take Shylock's wealth but he would rather want Shylock to sign a deed that he would hand over all his wealth after his death to his daughter and her husband. The Duke now released Antonio and dismissed the court. The Duke and his senators left the court and Bassanio and Antonio asked Portia to accept the 3,000 ducats for her help and skillful handling of the case. Portia refuses to take that money. Instead, she asked Bassanio for the ring he was wearing. Bassanio was full of sorrow because he did not want to give the ring that was given to Portia. Still, because Portia, who was the lawyer that time, had saved his friend's life, he gave that ring to her. On the other hand, even Nerissa, who had dressed as the clerk, asked for the ring from Graciano and here also Graciano had to give it to her. Now, after all this was over and Antonio's life was saved, Portia and Nerissa went back and after a few days, even uh, Graciano and Bassanio went to them and when their wives found out that they did not have the rings that they had given, there was a little quarrel among them. But then Portia narrated how she had come to be Balthazar, the lawyer, and Nerissa, her clerk. And all was now well, particularly as Antonio received news of the safe return of his ships. So this is how they all helped each other and Shylock, who was a cruel Jew, was punished. I hope you understand understood the chapter well. Thank you so much.